It's useful to understand how the waste management system works in Singapore in order to make smart choices as a thoughtful consumer and zero waster. Unlike other countries, Singapore does not put waste directly into a landfill. Instead, waste is burned in an incinerator. This means that products that are advertised as compostable or biodegradable make no difference in Singapore because they're going to get incinerated anyway. Likewise, internet memes which tell you that your plastic toothbrush is going to last 500 years in a landfill are also not true. Your toothbrush will get incinerated along with the rest of the rubbish. It's not going to hang around in the ground for the next five centuries. Not unless you are, say, stupid enough to just throw it in the ocean, in which case, probably nothing I say can help you. As of mid-2020, there are four waste incineration plants. These are called waste energy plants because the energy generated by combustion is delivered to the electricity grid. These waste energy plants meet 2-3% to of the nation's total electricity needs. Not only do the plants recapture energy from waste, but they also serve to reduce the total volume of rubbish. On average, the incineration plants reduce the total volume of waste by 90%. The residual ash is then sent to the country's only landfill at Semakau Island. So in a lot of ways, it looks like Singapore has the perfect waste system. Waste is burned, reduced to ash, then shipped to an island where it's contained safely. But despite the fact that the ash is only 10% of the original volume of waste, space at Semakau is running out and it is expected to be filled up by 2030. Let's look at the incineration process a bit closer to understand what's going on. These incineration plants run at about 850 degrees Celsius, which is hot enough to completely break down some materials, but not enough for others. The end result is that the residual ash consists largely of non-burnable materials, such as sand, stone, and metals. Plastics, which are made from fossil fuels like oil and natural gas, burn very well, leaving very little ash. They are an excellent fuel in the incineration process. Likewise, Organic material, like wood and food waste, are burnable and have little impact on the bottom ash that is causing some cow to fill up. Let me repeat that. Plastic waste is not the reason that some cow is filling up. So what about toxins? It's true that burning plastic does release toxins. However, the incineration plants are not at all like open pit burning. Toxins that are released in the combustion process are removed using chemical scrubbers, in order to purify the exhaust before it is released into the air. The air coming out of the smokestack is tested for pollution. The test results are reported annually and meet local clean air standards. Likewise, air around Singapore is constantly measured using the PSI system. So while 50 years ago such incineration plants would have been a major source of pollution, these modern plants are not. Sounds excellent, right? Why not just consume all the plastic we want, then burn it to light our homes? But plastic is still made from fossil fuels, so burning plastic does release carbon even if it doesn't contribute meaningfully to pollution or to the landfill. When you burn plastic, you are still going to release carbon dioxide, which is a major greenhouse gas. In fact, by some estimates, half of the carbon dioxide released from incinerators globally is due to burning plastic. If every country in the world burned their waste, carbon release would skyrocket, accelerating climate change. Also, as a source of fuel, plastic isn't that efficient. One kilogram of oil can produce 42,000 kilojoules of energy in a power plant, or it can produce about 0.5 kilograms of plastic, which will eventually give you around 20,000 kilojoules of energy in an incineration plant, so a little less than half. It is not an effective way to make electricity. Plastic burns quite cleanly, but it takes a lot of energy to make plastic in the first place. So as part of an effort to address climate change, we should really be working to reduce the consumption of plastic. Okay, so in summary, one, Singapore incinerates waste, including biodegradable and compostable waste. Two, Semica landfill is filling up and may reach capacity by 2030. Three, plastic is not a major contributor to bottom ash, and it's not the reason that Semica is filling up. Four, However, it does contribute to climate change. What can you do about it? Cut back on as much single-use plastic as possible. In fact, try to cut back on single-use everything. The less stuff we can send to the incinerator, the less carbon will be released into the air.